Hey guys, Anime Princess here, and today we're wrapping up the Spark series with a final character deep dive slash showcase. We've gotten to the point where we hit for 11 million and we have a maximum theoretical damage per second just shy of 100 million. We were able to do all the uber bosses we tried on stream. We didn't try Exarch or Cyrus just because of the really terrible fights for Spark, um, but we've done basically everything we want to and we farmed the mage blood. We've gone Petrified Blood with Pain Attunement, and I really see no logical upgrades besides just scrapping all the gear and converting to Aura Stacker, which is just completely overkill when we can do everything the way things are right now. In this video, we're going to be looking over my gear. I'll be giving some context to the gear I'm using, and then we're going to be looking through the passive tree and the path of building. Right off the bat, you can see we've dropped the self shield setup in favor of the NTR ring. The reason we did this was after transitioning to Mage Blood, I felt like I was getting enough speed with an increased effect Onslaught Flask and an increased effect Quicksilver Flask. And I really wanted to essentially double my damage with the NTR ring. I felt like I was already fast enough. First off, let's look at the wand. This is a fairly standard Spark Wand. If you want a crafting guide, cost probably under 10 divines and you can find one on path of math's channel his crafting guide is for a self chill wand you would follow the same steps however for the suffixes you would instead try to unveil chance to do double damage you could get hybrid cast speed you obviously wouldn't want the trigger because that's useless unless you're doing self chill so looking at the helmet the main thing to note is there's no trigger socketed spells when focused. The reason I dropped this is because when we go low life, we need to fit in arrogance support with petrified blood, and it was hard to justify taking off any other skill gems, so I decided to take off frost shield with sigil of power. Now because we're taking out two of the spells in the three spell trigger, we just decided to remove trigger completely, so now the other two gems are Tornado with Calling Strike support. Tornado auto seeks out the boss, so it's pretty handy to attach Calling Strike support if you have the sockets. As for crafting the helmet, I was trying to get Chaos Res with life, so I was just using a two socket uh, resonator with Aberrant Fossil and Pristine Fossil. And Chaos Res is important going Petrified Blood because you're cutting your life pool in half, so damage over time does twice as much damage to us, relatively speaking. And chaos damage goes through energy shield, so chaos damage over time is even more important than any of the other dots to defend yourself against. I'm opting to use a very defensive pair of boots. As you can see, we're getting full bleed immunity from Chance to Avoid Bleeding, which is a Eater of the World's Grand Acre combined with a suffix craft. If you were able to get chance to avoid bleeding on say a ring corruption or just through other means, then you would be able to do a more offensive pair of boots. And I would recommend stuff like Onslaught, Tailwind, Pierce. You can get these through like Hunter influence, Redeemer influence, stuff like that. You'd have to look into it. But uh, yeah, we're just going with really defensive pair of boots. Not necessarily best in slot, but it is pretty good for me. We do have the lab enchant that adds a lot of flat damage if you haven't killed recently. This is pretty important for damage to bosses. This is a lot of damage. I would recommend getting this boot enchant if you can get it. So the gloves have plus two pierce on the implicits with chance to nerve enemies on hit. I think these are the two best Eldritch Implicits we can get. The easiest way to get plus two pierce for the Implicits is, well, first of all, you just have to hit plus one pierce. It doesn't really matter with which one you hit it on. And then we're gonna have to win Orb of Conflict rolls. And the trick to Orb of Conflicts is that they tend to make the two mod levels closer together. So once you have the plus one pierce, you're gonna wanna buy the highest tier of the embers so that you have a level four of something random. And then when you orb a conflict, it's gonna 
lower the level four to level three and it's gonna boost your pierce up one level. And you're gonna boost it all the way up to level four this way by constantly reapplying the most expensive ember until they're both level four. So you're gonna have a level four of the plus one pierce and you're gonna have a level four of some random red modifier. And then it's a 50-50 shot. So it's gonna raise one of them to five. And then once they're both at four, you just keep hitting Orb of Conflicts until you win that 50-50. And once you have your plus two pierce, you just roll for the unnerve, choosing whichever one you can afford. It doesn't really matter. Now the body armor hasn't really changed. Again, I'm sort of memeing with the increased rarity. I would suggest following the crafting guide on my channel that goes for Frenzy Charge on hit with the spell crit chance. Going over the Mage Blood Flasks, I'm getting cast speed on one of the suffixes. We're getting just alley resistances on another. We're getting reduced mana cost crafted on the third. And we're getting increased armor on the last one. And an alternative to this would be using the Ruby, Sapphire, and Topaz instead which is better for bossing for sure. Now for the for the Sanctified Relic that is unique to Forbidden Sanctum League, the main thing of note here is that we've corrupted it with Lissia's Invocation of Pain Attunement because that gives us 30% more damage with low life. As you can see, uh, it's, right, uh, it's right over here. So we're saving four skill points by having pain attunement on the relic. And as for the modifiers, they don't really matter. We have plus one power charge and increased movement speed. I think the best in slot would be lightning damage can freeze, although we haven't found that yet. So we're gonna roll with this. As for my skill gems, they're all in the path of building. It's relatively straightforward. The main thing to note is I have two white sockets in the boots because when I want to fight bosses, I don't need shield charge with faster attacks. So we can just get a lot more damage out of those two sockets instead. So we're putting in Divergent Righteous Fire and Frost Shield. So if I'm going to a boss, I'm going to have Righteous Fire on. And I do have the option of using a Frost Shield in the boss arena as well. Looking at Path of Building real quick, you can see we have... Our boss damage set up here with 11 million for the hit and just shy of 100 million for our maximum DPS. This is with Frost Shield and Divergent Righteous Fire on. Now, taking a Frost Shield, you see we drop from 98 down to 93. And Righteous Fire takes us all the way down to 63 million. So for a mapping setup, we would probably want to drop both for shield charge faster attacks just because then we get a lot more life recovery, which works well with petrified blood. However, technically you could draw faster attacks and keep the righteous fire on for a really high amount of mapping damage as well. My tree hasn't really changed for the most part since my previous deep dive. We have path down here in order to take another jewel socket because triple crit multi is just insane damage. Now look at that. It's like 10% more almost. And I did change my large cluster. I really only changed it to get some chaos res, but I just couldn't get overshock. So we're using status now and in order to benefit fully from this, you need to do some ignite damage, which is why on the helmet, we have a searing exarch implicit that adds fire damage to spells. This character feels extremely strong right now. We can do pretty much all content in the game. Don't even have to read the alter downsides because we can handle all of them. If you wanted to take this a step further, obviously you would aura sack, but I'm just not interested in doing that at this moment. As for my plans for the rest of this league, we are going to be doing the Boat Private League, formerly known as Badgers Private League, next week. And I'm probably going to still be playing my Spark character because it's really fun. But I'm also going to want to experiment with other types of league starters just as a backup plan in case 
something happens to spark next patch. So you can still find me live on Twitch. I'll try and keep it fairly consistent, but we might not be doing daily streams anymore as we've already hit the 4040. We finished our character and now uh, I don't really have any urgency left <laughs> for this league. I hope you all enjoyed playing Spark with me. I had a blast. It was really fun hanging out with you guys on Twitch, reading all the YouTube comments. And yeah, this wraps up the Spark Guide.